So I'm really excited you guys are all here because I have something pretty cool to show you. Um, yesterday, we had a lot of fun doing some WordPress, non-WordPress, unofficial, official paintball goodness. And I'm just going to show you this right now, if it's going to play. Maybe I should turn this on. Yes, so this was our first paintball tournament for um, WordCamp, which is really cool. In third place, we had the UK. Are you guys represented? Yes, cool. Second place, we had the Netherlands with the team captain over here. And in first place, Bulgaria. Congratulations. So, well, to say the least, this is the, the first of many fun events that we should organize before WordCamps because it was really, really just a great time. So after the fun comes the work. So executing tasks is a fundamental component um, of our day-to-day -day work. Uh, you know, we may fix a bug, we may reply to an email, we may deploy some code. Um, because it's of small size, um, we're, you know, we're really um, comfortable executing that task and you know, just going forward with it, we, we find a lot of reward in doing those tasks. Sometimes I find myself in this you know, cycle of continuous task execution. Um, you know, just having my head down, uh, going through the motions, without really you know, looking up or coming up for air. And it's really easy to be in that state of mind. We don't work in a, you know, in a linear industry. We don't work in a factory where we just pull on a lever all day. We work online. You know, there's all these different channels. We have Twitter, we have GitHub, Gaze, uh, Basecamp, um, we have Slack, HipChat, Skype. All these different places where you know, work's coming in, we're reacting to stuff. Uh, we're, we're constantly being bombarded by all these small things that we need, uh, need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And now executing tasks isn't a bad thing, right? Uh, the more tasks we do, uh, the more we, we're paid, and the more experience we gain. That said, I often judge the way I work, and I know that I'm moving slower than I used to. I'm being less innovative than when I started off in this industry. Um, and from discussions with other people, I know I'm not alone. Uh, and that's not to discredit our work today, the work we're currently doing, or the work we'll be doing you know, in the next few weeks. But it's rather to question our ability to follow through on potential. You see, there's something really special about the industry, WordPress, that we work in. Um, and that is, it's growing incredibly quickly. Um, and rightly so. WordPress was built with the right motives. Uh, empowers organizations and individuals to, to be online and to have a presence in a very practic uh, practical and efficient manner. Um, but WordPress adoption doesn't grow by you know, a little bit every year. Um, it's, it's taking the web by storm. It's, it's growing an entire 2% every year. Three years ago, Matt was talking about um, you know, 15% adoption of the internet. Uh, two years ago, it was 17%. Last year, it was 19%. And this year, we can assume it will be, you know, over a fifth of the internet. And that's, those are incredible numbers. But there, there's, a, there's a slight, you know, issue there in that all these services that are being required um, from people or people are using WordPress need to be helped out with stuff. But I don't feel that there's a that the amount of qualified freelancers and agencies and products are able to catch up with this continu uh, continu continuously evolving demand. So what we're essentially left with is this gap, right, where we as professionals have the upper hand. So when you ask someone how their WordPress business is doing, and they say business is great, um, you know, we're, we're increasing our rates, we're really busy, uh, we're saying no to a lot of clients, it's, you know, these are all signs of maturity, but yet I still have mixed feelings. And that brings me back to execution. Uh, you see, when, if you're starting off with a WordPress business, 
uh, you'll probably move to saturation, you know, a full client load within one to two years. You'll have your head down, um, you know, you'll, you'll be in Basecamp, you'll be in GitHub, and you'll just be executing and meeting deadlines. So on one hand, you know, we quickly achieved this financial success and comfort, but on the other, um, you know, we're running the risk of sacrificing uh, aspects of our personal development, um, side projects, and ultimately curiosity. So all these thoughts got me th uh, thinking. When I first started out, um, you know, playing around with the web stuff, and I mean, I created my first website in '95, but I only really started taking this seriously about 10 years ago. Um, I was able to deliver on a lot of personal ideas relatively quickly. I was able to, you know, take ideas or visions or concepts and, you know, just really turn them into something that felt more real. Um, but I used to work in another industry back then. You know, I used to work in private banking and not even, uh, not even in the IT department. Um, so it was easy to, to work my time in the office and then when five o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock came around to leave and have all this time that was purely unstructured. That time I did not have to owe to anybody. I was not responsible to anyone. I could use that time to build whatever I wanted to. But when I switched uh, professions and I turned my passion into my work, these lines became blurred. Structured time started mixing into unstructured time. And before you know it, you've sort of lost most of your unstructured time. And you can do an entire career like this in certain industries, but not in ours. I mean, the web moves way too fast. Um, and I learned this the hard way um, when I was um, earlier this year when I was at Smashing Conf in Oxford. There was a presentation by someone on the Google Chrome team, um, and they were talking about uh, Shadow DOM, uh, web components, the Polymer project, uh, all really fascinating stuff. It was, it was amazing and it blew me away. Um, but I had never heard of it before, and that bothered me. The story gets worse before it gets better. Um, I may have walked out of that conference inspired, but two days later I was back into regular work and this, this inspiring talk I heard was completely off my radar. I had completely forgotten about it. And I think it's in moments like this when you know, we need to take a big step back and question you know, your current situation or our current situation, um, and I certainly did. You know, why are we being less innovative? Why are we um, moving slower and potentially learning less? Um, so even with all, all of the noise and distraction that we have in our day-to-day, -day, uh, it's more crucial than ever to, to know that the most important person in our lives is ourself. And knowing that, we need to determine uh, what we truly want to pursue. Uh, and this isn't, what's, this isn't about what's best for um, our company or our team uh, or you know, our friends, uh, and certainly isn't about trends. Um, it, it's a purely selfish decision and even exploration of what makes you curious, only you. So where does one start? Uh, where, does one start? Uh, where did I start? Um, I guess I just started by you know, taking inventory of things I'm interested in. And here's a part of that list. Um, writing these themes down uh, helped me be more conscious of what I'm interested in. So over the past few months, um, I've tried to be smart about the way I work, um, incorporating you know, small doses of what's important to my self-development. And here are the ideas that um, have so far worked best for me. So many of the things I'm interested in, um, I can digest in the form of articles or you know, books, uh, and, it, and it's great. You know, I'm so thankful that people online today share so much, and the quality of writing has increased. When you see a product get shipped um, online, it only takes a few days till there's an article about it explaining the process or why they did uh, things a certain way. And you know, if, if we're really deliberate in our actions, we can actually stay on the forefront of technology. We can be you know, almost a part of that dialogue uh, if we choose to. Uh, so there's obviously a, a lot of noise and content to process. Um, so it was important to me that the way I read, you know, had a, a sense of structure to it so I wouldn't lose track of it. Um, because content, the way we receive content is sporadic. You know, we'll receive it through Twitter, we'll receive it through um, a, a link through Skype, we'll get a, a, a digest from medium.com, uh, all these different things at different times of the day. And we obviously don't want to just open the links and then read it on the spot. 
we have other things to think about right then. Our mind's not in the right place. Um, so what worked for me is to start off with was to start collecting articles. Um, I use Instapaper. Uh, other people, you know, like Pocket or other tools out there. Um, and those things are great because, you know, you open the link, it comes up in your browser, you save the article, and then you can close the, the link again. You, you can get back to your normal work. Um, but then I also went out and got an offline reader because oftentimes when, you know, the best time we have to sort of read is when we have this frictional downtime. We're stuck between, you know, doing things or going from one place to another. We might be stuck in an airport. We might be at a train station or something. Um, so in, our, in my case, you know, I have a Mac, so I use ReKit. Um, it stores all the articles offline and also caches all the images. So I have, you know, full content um, at my disposal to read whenever I want. So I can take that 30 or 45 minutes to just power through stuff that's really interesting to me. Um, and that's important. One of the other issues I encountered was um, this, this notion of task consolidation um, for myself. So, of course, in our company, Human Made, um, you know, we have quite a number of people. We're 15, 16, who knows? We're always growing. Um, we, we, we have a lot of ways to track stuff, and we track stuff in a, in a good manner. You know, we have GitHub, we have Basecamp, everything's well organized. But those are things that are owned by the team, you know, right, and rightly so. Um, but there's nothing that's just owned by myself. And that's what I needed in order to be conscious of the things that I wanted to work on in my spare time, too. Um, so to, you know, and I, I realize there's, there's duplication in that process, but this is just something that, you know, has to occur if we really want to be deliberate about the way, you know, we tackle the things we're interested in. So a while back, I decided to settle on Trello, uh, which uses the Kanban style of, you know, tracking tasks. Um, let me give you a quick example. So this is actually a, a screen grab of my Trello uh, a while back. Um, so I've set up in a Trello, uh, sorry, I've set up Trello in a way where the tasks flow from the right to the left. So on the right side, uh, you, you might be able to read it, it might not. Uh, the column is called future. So these are tasks that are, or ideas that I have, but I'm not willing to commit time to yet. So I, this is stuff I'm interested in, but I'm not going to execute on yet. Uh, the next column, accepted, are things I do want to work on. I just need to find a time, but I am willing to commit that time. And then, you know, one more column over this week. So these are all things I like to work on this week. Um, ship today are things I'm going to work on today. And then the last column, um, shipped this week, are things I've already done this week. And it's kind of unnecessary, but in order for us to be able to post, um, or in our team, we post internal updates every week, so I can just grab all that stuff off there. Now, the labels up there, you'll see that each task has like some different colored labels. Each color represents a, a different product, uh, but there's one label that stands out, and that's the purple one. And the purple one, to me, represents this, this notion of what I call epics. Items that have a, a certain personal value to me or to you know, benefiting our team, um, in a way elevating our game. Um, so, by, by trying to have or trying to execute at least one epic every day, there's, that, th there's this sort of contribution to the bigger picture on a daily basis. So I never, you know, I, 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 I can try and combat that feeling of, you know, having my head down and going through the work um, by still executing larger tasks that have, you know, a certain amount of meaning for me. Last but not least, I also use rescue time. Um, and I don't believe in the, in the quantified self. You know, all these like fitness tracking things and things or sleep tracking or whatever tools that try to tell you how to do things. Um, but I do like this one if used correctly. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with rescue time, what it does is it tracks all your activity on your computer. So all the websites you go to and then all the tools you use. Uh, and then it puts them into categories. So something such as uh, having Sublime open or PHP Storm will go into coding. Um, being on medium.com might go towards um, reading. Um, being on Skype might, be, might go towards communications, um, and so on and so forth. Now, what you see here is uh, just an extract of one of my weeks uh, in terms of productivity. Because with all these categories you do have, like coding or reading or communications, you assign a productivity value to it. 
And in this case, um, you know, you can see it's, a, it's an R8 week. Um, went pretty well. Uh, but what I realized was that this represented the profile of who I am today. So things such as, you know, designing in Photoshop or um, doing code, um, I marked as highly productive. But, you know, these are kind of things I like to move away from and do different things in terms of my role in the company and who I want to become. So I had to reorder these categories in order to represent the role of, or the person I want to be down the road. So for this exact same week, um, we can see that you know, productivity has now dropped after I've reordered uh, the categories. Uh, but you, know, you, you could say it's not that much of a shift, but the most interesting thing is, and you might not be able to see this, is the, high, uh, the, the bright blue bars, uh, which are the most productive areas, are now almost half the time. So now I, I have this opportunity to try and expand that further so that I can really get the most out of my day and work towards uh, the, the kind of person I want to be. And by being more conscious of my time and my interests, um, I've shipped stuff or created stuff that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, and I'll just give you a few examples. So um, I, you know, I put time aside to design a website for a nonprofit, um, you know, which is run by people I have a lot of respect for. Um, so you know, that was just something I was able to do on a weekend, um, and I wouldn't have done it otherwise if I was just in the, the flow of my work. Um, after a year or more, uh, I finally wrote a longer article again, you know, about uh, you know something I enjoy, uh, product design. Um, so that went down quite well. Um, and then that prompted me to, to keep writing for, uh, some more, uh, but this time about being a nomad, you know, since I actually don't live anywhere and I just travel around. Um, and then the overwhelming response of this showed me that the, the nomad community is still at the beginning. Uh, so it, it's becoming this additional interest or topic that I'd like to pursue. Um, and then off the back of that, uh, Joe and I, you know, started playing around with an app. So we've, we've coded this on, you know, just spare weekend time. Um, and it's just an app whereby you put in any address and it'll find the, the, the closest coffee, um, transport, uh, co-working spots, gyms, whatever. So that, you know, when you're exploring a, a new town or you're looking at like Airbnb addresses, you can, you can sort of evaluate if it's a good place for you. Um, the app's not live yet, but it's just an idea, it's just an idea and something we're playing with something we may not be doing if we want to be more conscious, um, conscious about what we're really looking for. Um, but sometimes all it takes is just this little nudge, you know? Um, simply pushing an idea in the right direction and watching it catch fire. Um, I didn't do much with that paintball event you, did, you saw yesterday, you know, that video you just saw. Um, I simply set up a hack pad, uh, like you see here, which is a collaborative document. Um, and, you know, invited people to contribute to it. Um, and then one day I logged in, and there must have been 12 people kind of, you know, just going through the stuff and, you know, adding ideas or questioning uh, certain things or helping other people. Um, and that's incredible. And this brings us full circle, um, back to daily execution. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we have this choice. We can continually react to work, and always be a few steps behind, or we can pursue our curiosity, be deliberate about it, and actually help shape the web of tomorrow. Thank you. Are we doing questions? No, I've got a question. Where are Middle, looking? center. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Cool. So with all these different systems, Trello, Hackpad, you know, whatever you have running, when you first wake up, how do you know the number one thing you have to get done that day? Like, do you have one central place that keeps everything together? Oh, that's a really good question. It's, everything's disparate and separated. Yeah, it's definitely my own Trello. Um, so that's, that's where I would start off with. Um, I, I probably... First, check my email, you know, just out of like sheer panic, and you know, in case something's gone completely wrong. Uh, but I like to, you know, slowly make my way towards from the inbox into Trello. Um, you know, sometimes these these things don't occur every day. Uh, sometimes I'm running around a lot, um, and the goal of you know something like I just showed you isn't about 
you know, executing this, executing this perfectly every day. It's about, you know, trying to do it in small increments till you work up to the point that, you know, you feel really comfortable about it. But if you miss a couple days, then you just have to suck it up and get back in there and clean it up. Where am I looking? Ooh. Hey, okay, it works. Hey, uh, really great presentation. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, my question is, what do you do to avoid burning out? I mean, like, on a daily basis, because you know, sometimes coding might be really boring. And yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, I've, 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 I've certainly been there. Um, I, I think there is. I, I think pursuing those interests, like I say, I've, you know, a lot of what I just showed you is the result of me being, you know, in that sort of area um, where the sort of the passions you have and the curiosity you have doesn't align to what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that's where that sort of friction occurs. But now that I've been able to, you know, use you know parts of my day or you know spend my weekend at uh, points to work on things I'm really interested in, um, I know I'm working towards something that's um, of great value to me. You know, so I I, I feel empowered um, to be able to cl more closely align my work to my passion. Any other questions? First talk, everyone's shy. Um, no, well, I was struck by the point you made about going to the conference and coming over here realizing that yeah. there were topics you didn't understand. I've been through that very same process over the last sort of year or two years, and I've realized now that there were things coming along, and I can see them coming along, but I, I don't recognize them. And I don't really want to find the time to learn them. I was quite interested by the kind of approach that you've taken versus the one I took. I, I decided, right, my time on the front line yeah. has finished. There are better people, younger people, more eager people, more perhaps better organized people who oh. can invest the time into that. I'm going to step away from that and help them do that, find the time to do that. Whereas you felt clearly that you needed to reshape what you were doing to remain that guy, to stay on track with those things. Um, I suppose if there's a question here, it is how long can that last? We're all getting older. And it's in the community's interest, I think, that the veterans graduate and leave the front line to the, the, you know, the younger guys who've got the energy and the, and the drive. And we put our time in into community furtherment, whatever that means. Yeah, but uh, and that's I I, I think you've, you've you've nailed it um, to to an extent. I, I would probably disagree at on some parts. I mean, I think the the web is a beautiful thing. I think the the amount of people that contribute to it and how they contribute it is surely empowering. And it's I don't think I have to dig into every project I see or every you know bit of information, let's say like the shadow DOM stuff, the web component stuff, I want to be aware of it um, just because I feel it's, it's something that will be a, a massive part of the web of tomorrow. I just want to be, I want to know enough about it. I don't want to actually want to have to do the work for it. <laughs> so, and I agree with you, you know, we, we sort of graduate there, you know, like that's why part of my interests are hiring, leadership, community, nonprofits, you know, a lot of that sort of stuff um, interests me, but I still have, I still have that builder's mentality. You know, that's, that's, that's rooted into my DNA. I like to build stuff. So I'm intrinsically going to, you know, pursue things like that for probably a very long time. Maybe it'll just be a, a happy balance between the two. Um, I haven't found the answer yet. Thank you. <laughs> Kareem, did you have a question? The uh, the Nomad app you were showing yes is that a pet project is it going to be yeah it's released? a pet project you know like th these That's are things great. that we work we just hack on the weekend and um, it's it, it's cool because we're able to move fast on it because it's just that unstructured time uh, but you know once Joe and I kind of put our minds together and decide to you know put it out there which probably doesn't won't probably won't take too long um, I'll let you know thank you pleasure hi. Um, here. Yeah. Hey. Cool, cool. <laughs> so you showed, you, you showed like Instapaper and other places where you collect articles and you know I'm doing the same thing uh, with that but um, 
doesn't that distract you too much? Because I, f I found that some days when you go in and like, oh, there's like great art art articles and then it, it's like three hours past noon, I'm reading articles. Um, you know, yeah. kind of the other side of things is like being too distracted and kind of the slacking. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess what, what, what helps, um, or what I try to do is trying to bulk in the discovery of content uh, at one point. You know, it's like going through the places I like where aggregators who I trust, you know, like Sidebar.io, um, Medium, um, Hacker News, all these sort of places that I, I usually find great content. Um, shoot through that, try to tag and bookmark the stuff I want to read. And then read it on, you know, in, in, a, in a down, you know, some form of downtime where I'm relaxed. I'm not stressed out at work. I can just really enjoy the content and process it. But you need to find that one-hour block or the half-an-hour block. You can't just continually open Windows and read them and then go back to work and then answer a tweet and then, you know, go on Skype and then reply to your client and then, you know, <laughs> keep going. Okay. Thanks. Pleasure. Any other questions? So um, I've been told that there's an expert bar uh, downstairs. Uh, I don't consider myself an Is there another question? Oh, sorry. No. Thank you very much. You, Pleasure. You've basically been talking my soul inside out. Thank you. Uh, but uh, there's one question left. Like, do you ever go out and do stuff outside? No, no. So my basement is really nice. You know, it's just super dark. I'm, I'm, I'm really serious. I enjoy yeah. what you're saying. And, uh, um, is that, yeah, is that part of the planning or does it just happen? I, I think it just happens. You know, sometimes we, we find that streak in us. You know, we, we have this idea, we have this concept, or we ha we're, we're in flow and we just want to bang out work and we, we don't know what's going on. Like the world around us has fallen and we're just shipping great stuff. And other days we just need to rest, you know, like it's, um, yeah, but I, I do go out, um, even if I'm a little pale. So, <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. That was the last one. Cool. So there's, uh, there's another one. Just keeps going. So, how can you balance between two very high, uh, very important things? So let's say work and family, and then you know you have other things like personal projects, and personal interests, and those kind of stay in the back. How do I? I, I don't know. I, I haven't figured out that figured it out yet. Um, you, 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 you said balancing by two very important things at the beginning, or? Yeah, yeah. So, or more, if you have more. Yeah, no, I mean, we, you know, at Human Made, we, there, there's, there's such a pool of talent, there's such a pool of ideas at our company, and there's, there's always stuff to work on. Um, and it, it is hard to, to choose. Um, so, ultimately, we want to do it all, but then we just sometimes forget to do some parts, and we still end up, we still end up creating stuff, you know, during that time. Um, and obviously stuff falls away, but that's just the nature of things. Um, I don't think we've figured that, uh, that answer out either. Uh, I kind of meant more like between your personal life and between oh, my your personal life. work life. Yeah. Um, so. Shit, what personal life? <laughs> um, um, no, it's a, it's a valid point. Um, I, I guess, um, like I said before, you know, it's, uh, y you find these streaks of flow, and, and that's really important to me, uh, being in flow, being in, in, in tune with, with what I'm working on, um, and really believing in it, and then, you know, just finding the downtime to just pop out, you know, and I, 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 I'm sure it's easy to, to consume an entire, um, or said differently, I used to work 105 hours a week in banking. I don't do that anymore in this industry, uh, thankfully. Um, obviously, there's some weeks that you, you push harder than others, but I, I don't have a better answer for you. I mean, you, you know your private life best. Yep. Okay, thank you. So, uh, there's an expert bar where you can speak to Noel. Uh, it's uh, near a registration table. Uh, so, Noel, yeah. thank you. No worries. So, for clarification, I am not an expert on the subject. I just. I'm just trying to share my opinion. If you want to chat about it, please find me. Thank you very much.